Welcome back everyone. This is pretty much the first beginner's guide I've ever done for any iPhone. I've dropped thousands, not thousands, but a ton of videos on my second channel of the very basic stuff of getting started with any iPhone, specifically with iPhone 12s and iPhone 11s and all those ones. So let me go ahead and break down basically how to use and go about a daily life with an iPhone 12. Now, whether you have an iPhone 12, 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max, 12 Mini, they all can pretty much do the exact same thing. So keep that in mind. Now on the outside, the pretty much the new visual change, as you guys may know, is the flat side. Previous iPhones had this kind of curved texture to it. This one is now flat one. So congrats if you bought this phone, this is pretty much a new design. <laughs> so congrats if you bought this phone, this is pretty much a new design. Now the very first thing I wanna to showcase to you is how to insert your SIM card. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys already know this. But when you first buy a phone, you need to figure out how to insert a SIM card into it. So in the box, it came with a SIM eject tool. All you have to do is locate on the side of your phone, the right side if you're looking on the back, the left side if you're looking on the front, right underneath the volume buttons, which are right here. There's a little hole right here, which you can actually just go and insert your SIM card in. So what you want to do, get your SIM eject tool, put it right in the little hole right here, put it in, pop it out and you will be able to put in your SIM card right here. Now there's one side, which is this side, that kind of has a groove and an indent to it right here. Hopefully you can see it. And you just want to put in your SIM card here, and then just go ahead and put it back in exactly how you put it in. So match up the holes right there, put it in, push it in, and you should be good to go. So if you have your SIM card in it, and you already went through the setup, I'm already assuming that you went through the setup, which is really easy to go through. Let me go ahead and break down the body of it. Now on the bottom, on the back, first of all, you have the glass back. We now have the MagSafe capability. So if you wanna spend $40 and buy the new charger, you have the capability of doing so, which is this one. I wouldn't really recommend it. It's kind of a waste of money, but you have it. So that's a really cool feature now with your new iPhone. You have a dual camera setup right here, which we'll get into later in this video. 12 megapixel wide, 12 megapixel ultra wide, the flash, a microphone. On the bottom, you can see that we have a lightning port. Now, this is how you're going to charge your iPhone. You have a speaker setup. I think one of them is a speaker, one of them isn't. This is the speaker, I would assume. And this is how you would charge your phone. You pretty much plug it in, plug it out, and you pretty much go from there. Now, on the side of this phone, you have the power button as well as this thing, which I think is for the 5G or whatever it is. I'm not too sure. But this is how you turn on and off your phone. I'm sure you guys know this. On the top, there's nothing except for these bands that pretty much help with the data and signal and all that stuff. And on this side, you have the power button, the volume down, volume up, and the ringer on off switch. So if you want to quickly turn your phone on mute or turn it on silent, you don't have to press down the volume buttons every single time or volume up. You can just turn it on or off mute by clicking this and you know kind of moving it back and forth. So that's pretty much the outside of it. And obviously on the front, you have that 6.1 inch display on this one. And it's the same thing for the iPhone 12 Pro, that same 6.1 inch display. Now you do have that LiDAR sensor and ultra wide sensor on the iPhone 12 Pro, which is really cool. So we can go ahead and utilize those, but I'll probably talk more about those in the later part of this video. Now to turn on your phone, I'm sure if it's already on an off state, all you have to do is hold down the power button and it'll go ahead and turn on the phone. Now if you want to turn off your phone when you have it on display like this, what you want to do is hold up the volume up button and the power button at the same time, just like this and it'll go ahead and come into this page. Now, if you want to go ahead and cancel it and you don't want to do it, you can go and click here. Now, if you're in a position where you actually want to go and you know call somebody like the cops or police or something, you would go ahead and slide this emergency SOS. I would not recommend doing it. Don't do it right now unless you're in an emergency, then do it. But if you want to turn off your phone, you want to go ahead and slide to power off right here. And that is exactly how you power off these phones. If you hold down this button, it'll unlock Siri. You don't want to do that. You want to go and hold up the volume up button and the power button at the same time to turn your phone off, then slide to power off. Now, if you want to turn it back on in this off state, like I stated, you just want to hold down the power button, which is on this side. So go ahead, hold it down, and you'll pretty much see that the phone will boot up in an Apple logo. And whenever your phone is in an Apple logo, pretty much it's just an on or off stage, or sometimes there could be an update going on. If you ever see the Apple logo, pretty much just never hold down any buttons. That's pretty much the best way to go about it, unless you're trying to purposely put your phone in a different mode. But for a majority of you, I'm pretty sure that's not the case. So now that our phone boot up, let me go ahead and break down this main screen. So typically on most iPhones, we have the time and date up here. Now, if you look right here on the bottom, there's this new gesture. It's not new, but it's been around for a while. And if you look to the right, if you want to quickly access the camera, you go ahead and swipe to the right and you can go and access the camera. If you swipe up, you can come back into the main panel. If you want to go into the flashlight, you can go and hold this down and you can see that the flashlight has now turned on. Now, that's a really easy thing if these are the quick toggles, if you want to turn it on, turn it off, you have the options of doing so. Now, another really cool thing that we have is the control center. 
So if you swipe down from the top right, you'll pretty much come into this panel. Now here you can access a lot of different things. You can go ahead and turn on or off Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or the airplane mode. You can mess with your music right here. You can go ahead and turn down the brightness a little bit. You can turn up the volume, do not disturb modes, the auto rotate mode. You can marry your screen to a TV that supports Apple TV or whatever. Then you have your quick toggles down here too. Flashlight, timer, calculator, camera, and we can add more later on, which we'll get into in a second. Now, if you're ever in a position that you wanna go back to a specific panel, or you wanna go back to the main screen that you were on before, all you have to do is swipe up from this little bar down here. And I'll go ahead and go into more of that detail in a second. But if we swipe left, you'll see that we have all these widgets right here. Now, widgets aren't necessarily new, but the way to add widgets to our home screen is new. You guys may have seen that. Now, in this specific case, what we can do is just swipe through, and you'll see a bunch of these different things that you can get a lot of information from. Now, you can kind of go ahead and get an idea, and if you're currently on your iPhone, you can look through these. And I would recommend you to kind of memorize or just remember kind of the ones that you like, because we can go ahead and add these to our home screen later on. So in terms of the front panel, that really pretty much covers it up. Now, if you want to go ahead and go through and actually go to the main screen, to your home screen, all you have to do is swipe up and you're already on your main screen. Now, if you have a passcode set up or face ID set up already, you can obviously go ahead and you know unlock your phone that way. This is your home screen of your phone. So whenever you go anywhere, this is where you're going to be at for the most part. And if you swipe up, you'll pretty much come into this panel. So let's go ahead and if you wanna open up any app, go into music or whatever. Now, let's say you wanna come back home. There's no home button, as you guys may know. In order to come back home, you want to swipe up. There's a little bar down here. All you have to do is grab it and just swipe it up and the app swipe away. You can do this for any app. Go ahead and go into any app and you can swipe up. And that's exactly how you go home. Now, if you want to, let's say, go into this app and you wanna to go to the app that you were just on previously. So let's say I open this up and I go ahead and go into the internet. But let's say I wanna go back to the music app. You don't necessarily have to swipe out of here and then go searching for it. If you're in this app, all you have to do is grab that little bar at the bottom and just swipe it to the other display. And you can see the other app pulled up too. So you can swipe between apps this way without having to constantly go out of the app and go into it. You can just swipe between it. And so you can swipe between all the apps that you have in your multitasking panel. Now, if you don't want to go to your next one or you want to close out of apps, all you have to do is grab your little bar, bring it about to this little direction right here until you start seeing other apps. And then you can go ahead and go through all these other apps that are here that you have already pre previously opened. And you can go and click on whichever one you went to to open it back up. So if I wanted to go back into Quizlet, I can go and click on it here rather than searching for it throughout my screen. Now, it is good practice for, you know, a majority of people to close out of these apps if you're not using it. Now, Apple does a really good job at kind of multitasking your apps and removing them. So basically, every app that you have here is stored into RAM. Now, if it closes out, for example, if I go into this one, it may close out as you can see or restart it. But you don't necessarily have to delete it if you don't want to, but if you want to delete an app, what you want to do is make sure it's on your front panel like this or your multitasking panel, and you want to swipe it out just like this. And when you swipe out an app, pretty much it goes out of storage. It's not in your RAM anymore. It's still on your device. You didn't delete the app, but all it does is just save it from, you know, kind of taking up your RAM. The iPhone 12 has four gigabytes of RAM. The iPhone 12 Pro has six gigabytes of RAM. The more RAM you have, the more apps you can store in the background without it having to constantly refresh. So if I go into, you know, this app, for example, you can see it stayed it open. It didn't go and refresh the app. But if I go back and if I go into an app like this, for example, it may restart the app. As you can see, you restarted it. So the more RAM you have, the less likely it is for that type of stuff to happen. So that really pretty much covers it up in terms of the gesture standpoint. You know now to you know swipe out of an app, to get into the multitasking panel, and to swipe between apps. That's really the main important stuff here. Now let's go ahead and make our way over to our settings app, which is right here. If you don't see it here, you can always swipe down and search up settings. This is our spotlight search, which I'll get into in a second. But let's go ahead and go into our settings app. Now this is going to be a long one probably. So you should see your name right here. If you don't see it, then you're probably not logged into an iCloud account. So you want to go and click here, log into an iCloud account to whichever one you want, and then pretty much go on from there. It's not a necessity. It's not something you have to do. But for 99.99% of people who are on an iPhone, it is probably recommended you cannot use things like iMessage, FaceTime, even download apps on your phone without having an iCloud account installed. So make sure you have an iCloud account of some way. Now, right here, basically, this is just, you know, your signals, your airplane mode, if you want to enable it, your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular. These are basic things that I'm sure a lot of people already know. Now, right here, notifications. Basically, if you want apps to send you notifications that you have installed, you can go ahead and monitor and kind of change your notification settings around. So if you don't want the app store sending you notifications, you can click here. 
disable allow notifications and kind of go from there. Now I want to kind of want to keep these on. So you can pretty much go down the list and pretty much go here. The next one is sounds and haptics. If you want to go ahead and change your vibration or your sound or your whatever, if you want to change your ringer and alerts, or if you want to change your ringtone, your, your keyboard sound system haptics, you can go ahead and change up a lot of different things here. With do not disturb, pretty much it'll go ahead and change your do not disturb settings, whichever ones you want. I never really go in here. Now with screen time, basically this is a new app that kind of allows you to see which apps you're using for the most time and how much screen on time you have. So screen on time is basically whenever you're using an app, whenever you're on the main panel or whatever, how much time your screen is on versus standby. So if your phone is off, that's standby. If it's on it, then it's obviously screen on time. So you can see those and monitor those settings here. Now this is probably one of the most popular settings within settings app, which is general. So if you click on here, you can monitor a ton of stuff within here and I'll go ahead and hit on the most popular. So first of all, with the about phone, it'll go ahead and tell you exactly what your phone is, all the storage and stuff you have, even warranty stuff. Now with software update, if you ever need to go and update your phone, this is where you're going to go. You're gonna go into software update inside of the general settings, inside of the settings app. So you'll go into settings, general, then software update. And right now there's not an update for this device yet, but when there is, you go ahead and go here and you can pretty much just update your device here. So this is pretty much the most important thing that I would probably tell everyone to hit on. I think this is the most important thing within settings. Besides Wi-Fi settings and all that, this is where a majority of people will probably be spending their time in my opinion. Now, right underneath that, you have these settings, which is just, you know, random miscellaneous settings. Right here is another big one, iPhone storage. So you can monitor how much of your storage is used within these apps. So if you don't like certain apps using your storage, you can always go and monitor these ones and modify and turn off, on, all that good stuff. This is another huge app that I would recommend people to go through if you're just using your iPhone, kind of monitoring your storage every once in a while. This is exactly where you pretty much want to go. Now you also have background app refresh. If you want to disable an app from being able to use it in the background, you can go ahead and disable it here. So if you don't want Keynote using, basically if the more apps that are disabled here, you won't get notifications, you won't get anything like that, but you'll pretty much be saving a little bit of battery life for every app that you disable. Then you have these date and time, keyboard, fonts, language and region and dictionary. And then that's really it. Then you have the reset settings down here. Now, if you ever need to go and reset your device, if you're selling it off or if you're done using it, you want to give it to your kid and you want to delete everything off of it, then I would recommend clicking erase all content and settings. But you don't want to erase all content and settings because you just bought your phone. It's good to know where this is at. But again, you're probably only going to use it like once or twice if your phone is completely bricked or you're going to sell it off or something. Of course, you're going to click erase all content and settings. So in this case, do not do it. You just bought your phone. You don't not want to do that. Now, another thing you guys may not be able to know that I didn't even tell you guys is swiping back. So if you want to go ahead and swipe back to the previous app, you don't have to go and click settings every time. You can go and just grab the site and you can go back to the previous app. Now, it doesn't go forward. Well, I guess I did. Now, it doesn't go forward, unfortunately, but you can always go back and swipe back for it. Now, you have the control center toggle here, which will basically allow you to change right here, right these quick toggles right here that we mentioned. You can go ahead and modify these. So what we can do is if you want to change the location of, you know, the camera app, we can go ahead and drag it and bring it up right here. And now when we go into the camera, the camera is now number one. But also with all these other quick toggles down here, we can go ahead and change all these. We can go and add voice memos there and low power mode and all this crazy stuff. And the more pluses you click here, the bigger your little quick toggle section is here. So that's kind of a quick little understanding of it. Again, this isn't like the craziest important aspect, but there's a lot of different things here that allow people to actually use it. Now, one thing I wanna show you right now is that there's a screen recording toggle right here. I'll recommend everyone clicking plus on it. That is something that's very important and I'll probably talk about it later on in this video, but for the time being, just make sure the screen recording toggle is here. It looks like that. Just make sure it's somewhere in this toggle. Now let's go and swipe back. Now within display and brightness, we now have the ability of turning on dark mode within iOS 13, it was brought, but now we have that on iOS 14 as well. So to turn on dark mode, what you can do is click on the dark mode section right here, and it'll pretty much make all the pixels black, which is a really cool thing. Now you can also make it set it to automatic. So on different times of the day, it'll go ahead and turn on bright or dark mode, which is a huge thing and I really do like that. Now me personally, I'm more of a light mode person when I film these videos, dark mode kind of seems a little weird sometimes. So you can go ahead and determine whether you like dark mode or you like light mode. Me personally, for this case, I'll probably use light mode. Now true tone is another really awesome thing. Basically it warms the display. It's like, I don't know what it is, like ambient light or whatever, but it definitely makes makes the display look that much better. And I would recommend if your iPhone supports it, which if you have an iPhone 12, it probably supports it. I'd recommend turning on True Tone. It is a really cool feature and it's definitely one of my favorite things with these iPhones for sure. Now you can go ahead and turn on Night Shift, Auto Lock, Race to Wake, 
Basically, if you raise your phone, you can go and turn it on and off. Auto lock is pretty much how long you want your phone to stay on before it turns off the display. So if you're somebody who wants the display to turn off 30 seconds within it, then go ahead and turn on 30 seconds. But the longer and the bigger this number is, basically the longer your display will keep on and stay on when it's inactive. So if you want it to turn off right when you're done with it, 30 seconds is the way to go. But if you never want your display to turn off, if you're somebody who wants to set their phone away and keep the display on, then never is the way you want to go here. So that really pretty much covers everything for the most part that I want to hit on the settings. The other things are kind of just a continuation on it. But if you go down below, you'll see a lot more settings and options. But at the very bottom, you'll see your personal apps. So right here are a bunch of apps that you have installed on your phone. And sometimes you may come in a situation where, you know, for some reason it says Instagram wasn't able to access the camera or microphone. And if that is the case, what you can do is find the app, go into here, and you want to make sure all these things are enabled, the background app refresh and stuff. And there's some cases where it might not even be important. And I haven't really opened any of these apps, but you can go ahead and modify a lot of these apps and a lot of those different settings within this specific panel. So again, this is another way for you to kind of go through. And that really pretty much breaks down the whole entire settings app. It's really nothing too crazy. I think the more you just kind of go and kind of explore yourself, you'll probably see every single little detail. Again, this is kind of a broad overview, but the settings app is a very, very important app for you guys to go through for sure. Now, let's say you went ahead and have an app on your display that you want to go ahead and take away. You know, let's say I never use something like the home app, for example. What we can do now is go ahead and basically you want to hold press and long press until it comes into this panel. Now, I wasn't expecting it to go there, but apparently if you go ahead and long press anywhere, it'll go ahead and get into jiggle mode. Now, what this is pretty much and what the minus buttons are is pretty much if you don't want an app to be there, you can go ahead and either move it away or you can easily go and just delete it from your main screen to put into the app library or just delete it from your phone. Now, let's say I want this home app. Let's say I don't want it here. I want to go ahead and put on a different page. What we can do is go ahead and drag it here bring it off to the side and drop it to whatever page we want to. Let's say we want it back. We're going to go ahead and pick the app up like this. Go ahead and drag it back to the main page and drop it here. So let's go ahead and bring this app over to this page once more. Now, once we want to get out of this specific mode, what we're going to do is just swipe up from the bottom. Remember how we swiped up to get out of the app? We're pretty much going to do the same exact thing here. Now, to get back into jiggle mode, go and hold down and long press anywhere. Now, what we want to do is click the minus button. Now, when we see this, we'll get a couple of different options. We'll get a delete app, move to app library, or cancel. If we want to cancel it, not modify it, click cancel. But if we want to delete the app, we're obviously going to click delete app. Now, this will delete it from our whole entire device. It's not going to be anywhere on our phone. So if you want to do that, then go for it. But if you want to move the app to the app library and keep it on your phone, but just take it away from the pages, we can actually do that. So let's go ahead and click move to app library. We'll swipe up to get out of it. And now when we scroll all the way to the side, we can pretty much see our app library. So what this is, is brand new with iOS 14. We can pretty much go ahead and, you know, store our apps here, which is really cool. And if you don't want them on your main screen, if you don't want them here, you have the option of actually putting them here, which is really cool. Now you can go ahead and search for all the apps here. And even though we have the home app off our main screen, you can see that somewhere here, it's still here. As you can see, the home app is here and we can go and open it still and use it as a main app, but it's just not on our phone right there on our main screen. So that's a really cool thing. And that's something that iOS 14 brought, which is really awesome. Now, also, if you're on this different page or whatever, and you want to come back to the main screen, you can go and swipe up and I'll go ahead and take you right there. Now, we mentioned this earlier and I'll go ahead and hit on it again. The spotlight search, basically, if you swipe down, you can pretty much get into the search bar. So what this is, is pretty much a way for you to search through all the files, search through all the apps on your phone, and you can pretty much just easily find an app this way. So with the keyboard at the bottom, first of all, let's go ahead and walk through the keyboard. You have obviously this keyboard, it's a QWERTY keyboard. You can click the numbers and you can access all these things. You can go click here. If you want uppercase, you have the uppercase right here. If you want the emojis, which is very important, you can go and click on the emoji icon here. Again, if you want to go back to the keyboard, you click right here. Now this keyboard also has swipe capability. So if you want to type in hi and Instead of going like this, you can go ahead, click the backspace, swipe to HI or Hey or anything like that. Now that may be a little bit too crazy. Maybe people don't want to do that. So in this case, within Spotlight Search, let's go ahead and just type in, you know, App Store. So let's just type in App, and then we can type in Store. And as you can see, the App Store was already there. And it'll go ahead and not only tell us where the App Store is, the app, it'll also give us a Google search. It'll also tell us some other apps that we may want, the Apple Store. It'll also tell us the settings for these things, the App Store, Apple Store, Video Autoplay, and different aspects like that. It'll also break down some serious suggestion websites. If we want to go ahead and go into the App Store, we can go and click here. 
and you can pretty much use it. Now there's a lot of different capability within Spotlight Search and it's a really cool little thing. So I would recommend you guys to kind of go through here, search up, you know, whatever you want to and pretty much go through it. It can search apps, websites, things within the files app, all sorts of different things. There's a lot of capability within this app for sure. It's not even an app, it's already built in. Now, let's say we go into the app store, right? And you're logged into your iCloud account. It's very easy to go ahead and download apps and uninstall apps and all that crazy stuff. So what you wanna do is go ahead and click the search bar down here. You wanna go and click search and you just wanna search whatever app you're looking for. So if you wanna go, go ahead and click Snapchat, for example, we can go ahead and start typing in Snap. It's already recommended to us. So we can go ahead and tap here and it'll go ahead and take us into the Snapchat page. Now there's a lot of apps that are available here. There's TikTok, there's tons of different things. But what we can do is actually go and click on Snapchat right here and we can go ahead and install it. Now there should be an install button for a majority of people. As you can see, I have an update button. Now updating our apps is basically getting the most recent version of those apps. So in good practice, if there is ever an update button, I would probably recommend everyone to just go click it and installing an app is the exact same way you go ahead and click install and it'll go ahead and get into the circle and it'll go ahead and start you know going through now if you want to stop the update you can go ahead and click the stop button but because we don't want that we're going to go ahead and let it go through so it should only take a couple of more seconds you don't have to stay on this page if you don't want to and as soon as it says open you can pretty much just click on to open the app and it'll go ahead and take you directly into the app now using what we learned before let's go and swipe back in our gestures and in this page what we can do is actually within this app we can update all of our apps with Within it. So I'm sure you guys already know this, but if we go and click back on the search button, and if we actually go ahead and go back home right here, on the top right, you should be able to see this little person icon. We can go and click here. We can go and click purchased, and we can see a bunch of our apps here. Now, unfortunately on this device, I don't have any apps that need to be updated, but right down here, there should be a bunch of apps that you can actually go down through. There should be an update all button, and you can actually just update all your apps right there, which is really awesome. So that is something that a lot of people I'd recommend going through, especially if you have an iPhone. Like I stated before, it's really good practice to constantly go through and update your phones as much as possible. Now I mentioned this earlier and I'll go ahead and say it again. Let me go ahead and break down how to screenshot and screen record on any iPhone 12, whether it's a 12 Pro, 12 mini, whatever. Now to screenshot, what we want to do is locate the volume up button, which is right here, and the power button. And you want to hold down for one second and just let go, just like how I did. And and you'll go ahead and get into this specific panel. You can swipe through and it'll go ahead and you know kind of put it in the photo app library. Now go ahead and click it again and you'll see that you went ahead and screenshot it. Now we can do is click on the page and we can go and edit it however we want to. We can draw circles, we can add text, we can do all sorts of different things. And this is a really cool way to modify a specific screenshot. Now I'll let you guys kind of go through here. If you want to go ahead and send it off, there's a share button right up here. We can go and click the share button, airdrop it, text, airdrop it, text it, do whatever you want to do with it, but it's pretty much all game and all fair here. And you know, obviously there's a lot of other options here. You can Instagram, Facebook, post it on Twitter, post it on Snapchat, whatever you want to do, the options are literally endless here. So that's another really awesome thing you can do. Now, if you want to screen record, remember how I said earlier to put that screen recording toggle on your iPhone? Well, now what we can do is go back, swipe down from the top right corner where the Wi-Fi and battery are, swipe down from here, You'll see this little option that we added earlier called screen recording, remember that? But what we can do is go ahead and click on it and what'll happen basically is it'll go ahead and start screen recording whatever we have on our display. So whatever we're doing now, it'll go ahead and screen record it. So if we swipe out, if we go and swipe out of here, if we go through pages, it'll pretty much be recording this. Now, whenever we want it to stop, we can click on the top right corner or what we can do is swipe down from here and click right here and it'll go ahead and stop the recording. Now, both the screenshot and the screen recording are saved within our Photos app. So what we can do is go into our Photos app, which is right here, and you will basically be able to see that all of our photos are right here. Our screenshots that we made, as well as that screen recording thing that we just did. So what we can do now is go ahead and click the share icon right here again, and we can go ahead and share it off to whoever we want to. It's the same exact panel as before. So that's another really awesome thing that we have here. Now let's go ahead and go back to the home screen. And that, so that's basically how to screen record and screenshot. Now, if you wanna go ahead and add widgets, like I mentioned earlier, these widgets are new within iOS 14 and our iPhone 12s are the first phones to support it. And what we can do basically is add these widgets to our home screen. So let's say we wanna add this you know, widget for battery life. We can go ahead and drag it, hold it down, drag it to our main screen right here and just paste it wherever we want to. So let me go ahead and put this on the top right corner and you can go ahead and drag all sorts of these widgets to our main screen, not these ones, these widgets to our main screen. And what we can do if you wanna add more, you wanna swipe back over here, click edit, click edit. There's a plus button up here. We can go and click the plus button and there's a ton of other settings that we can go ahead and modify here. We can go and click and add whatever widget we want. 
So click here, click add widget, go ahead and drag this to wherever we want to as well. And that's really pretty much the process to add any widgets that we want to, which is really cool. And like I said, you can go and modify through these. There's a bunch of tutorials online. This is pretty much a basic walkthrough of that. Now I'll go ahead and end it off with the camera and just kind of talk about how to use the camera as quickly and efficiently as possible. So like I said, this is the camera app. You can also search for it through the you know, Spotlight search. We can go ahead and open it. And once you're here, you'll see that there's a ton of other capability. On the bottom, you can see there's very, at the very beginning, there's a time-lapse option that basically if you want to make a time-lapse of different times, you can go and do it here. If you want to camera, if you, if you want the slow-mo camera option, you can go ahead and slow certain things down. So you can do it within here. If you want the video option, you can go and do it here. Now, if you're somebody who wants to change your resolution of the video, I would always recommend at the top right corner to keep it at HD at 30. But if you want to turn on 4K, you have that ability of doing so. But like I said, HD is probably good enough. If you're filming a video, that is the time limit. So if you're going to record a video right now, it'll go and start turning red. And that is how much time we've been recording the video on. Now, if we want to swipe, we can go ahead and swipe between these pages so we can go from one page to the other. And it will go ahead and take us from photo mode to video mode. And photo mode is just your standard photo mode. Portrait mode is where we can actually take photos and really nice high quality videos and photos, mostly photos of different people. And it's really awesome. I would recommend people doing it. And with panel mode, basically, if you're going to go ahead and create a panorama, you can go ahead and do so with this specific lens. Now, again, with the iPhone 12 series specifically, I'm sure most of you guys know how to take photos and videos. We now have this new ultra wide sensor which was there with the iPhone 11 but in order to use it all you want to do is pinch your two fingers together and kind of zoom out and you can see that we actually zoomed out of the photo and this is how you utilize that new ultra wide sensor now if you have a telephoto lens you can also zoom in a lot more within a photo too but unfortunately this camera doesn't have it but you can still zoom in quite a bit now you can also go ahead and drag this back and forth in order to kind of zoom in and out of a photo which is really cool and this is all native within the camera app so that is something else that is really awesome so if you're somebody who's constantly taking photos or videos you can go ahead and utilize this to whatever discretion you want and at the very bottom you can see that we have a couple of different options so right here obviously if you want to take the photo you can do so here if you want the front camera on you can go and click here if you want to look at the photo that we just did let's say we just took this photo we can go and click here and look at the photo that we just made and you can go through all the other photos too which is really cool now swipe down and you can go and get back here now at the very top there's an arrow if we click the arrow you can see it unlocks a couple of more settings this is the flash if you want the flash to be on and off you can go and change it there this is the live photo mode i would recommend everyone to turn it off but you can keep it on if you want to this is the aspect ratio of the photo so if you want 4 by 3 or if you want 16 by 9 you can go and change those photos that way now if you want to go ahead and use this you can go and do this if you want this on, you can go ahead and turn on the timer or the timer off, which is really cool. And you can go ahead and change the filters within these photos too, right here. Now at the very top, again, you have the same little live photo mode option here, and you have flash on there. So those are quick toggles. If you want these off, you can go and click there. And that really pretty much covers up the whole entire photo aspect, and it covers up pretty much everything that you need to start using your iPhone 12. That is really pretty much it. Again, this is a super long video, but it's kind of a beginner's guide of how to exactly use your iPhone 12. I broke down exactly the hardware features of this phone, the software features, how to use it, how to pretty much go through the whole entire setup process. And by this time, you should be able to use most of the major features of the iPhone 12. Again, I'm assuming you guys already know how to make phone calls and messages and all that stuff. But beyond that, that's basically how to use the iPhone 12 for the most part. So if you guys have any questions or into any other problems, let me know in the comment section below hit the like button on me so much but but definitely hit that subscribe button every single subscriber that we get really discount so me so much for you guys can hit that also check out the other links down in the description as well my twitter my instagram my other channels more importantly than everything else i love every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out till then